Hello and welcome to the final episode, the final, final episode in our Catch Up Fun series for young learners. Thank you for joining us this, this afternoon where I am, but wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Stuart Vinnie and I'll be moderating today's webinar with my colleague Becky East in the chat box and for the questions and answers uh, at the end. Uh, during the webinar, you'll be able to hear and see today's speakers, Anne Robinson and Jane Ritter. You'll be able to see their slides and you'll be able to interact with them, with us and with each other through the chat box at the bottom of your screen. Um, do remember if you're using the chat box to select all panellists and attendees in the selection box so that we can all see what you're saying. Uh, the recording of today's webinar will be on the Catch Up Fun website. That's cambridge.org slash catch up fun and we would also email you a recording plus your attendance certificate uh, next week okay um i'm just going to say a little bit about each of our speakers today i'm sure you're most of you will be familiar with Anne robertson and jane ritter they've certainly done a lot of work for us in this series of webinars and of course previous webinars um, so Anne, first of all, Anne Robinson is a seminar presenter for Cambridge Assessment English. Um, she regularly gives set seminars, both in Spain and internationally, although more these days webinars, I would imagine. Uh, she's the author of the Fun4 series, that's Fun for Starters, Fun for Movers, Fun for Flyers, uh, the fourth edition now. And she's also part of the writing team for our new Fun Skills series from Cambridge University Press. And contributes regularly to our online World of Fun resource site for younger learners. I'll show you that later. And you can also follow Anne's own blog, which is teachingtogether.info. And now Jane. So Jane Ritter is also an author of the Fun Skills series, and specifically, Jane worked on the Home Fun booklets, which are a part of that series. She's also worked on various other resources for Cambridge University Press. She's been teaching adults and young learners for over 20 years in Italy, Hong Kong. Uh, she's an experienced Cambridge examiner. Uh, she's an examiner trainer. She's a lecturer, teacher trainer. She also uh, tutors on the CELTA and DELTA programs, and she's been involved with other various teaching development and training programs. And both uh, Jane and Anne have done um, a webinar together for us. That was last year in our Home Fun series. So it's, it, 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 it's with pleasure that we're inviting them back this year to join up together again in this final webinar for our Catch Up Fun series. So Jane, Anne, welcome. Thank you, Stuart. I'll hand over to you two. Thank you. Very exciting, Jane. Did you see in the chat, we've got people from loads I of countries. I was just checking, yes. Yeah, from amazing. All over. Yes. Colombia, Tunisia, Russia. Um, Finland, I don't think if, in my memory that I've never I've ever had a participant from Finland. So. Welcome. <laughs> yes. welcome. And Turkey, Brazil, you are, Mexico, what, all that. And what time, whatever time it is where you are, thank you for taking the time to uh, connect today with to this webinar. So Jane, let's interact. Let's vary the pace. And let's, and let's have some, some fun. fun. <laughs> so, Jane, for our first idea, have you got your equipment? Have you got your blue exclamation mark? I and do. have you got one of these? What's this? A question mark? Yes. Have you, so you've got both of those. Excellent. Okay, Jane, so are you ready? Okay, is that a question or an exclamation when I'm saying ready? Ready. Question, excellent. Oh, ready. <laughs> Brilliant. Really? 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 Re really? Amazing. Sorry? Sorry. Sure. Fantastic. 
Well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, um, some of the words that I showed and said to, um, to Jane there are on this slide. Let's start with the question words first. So the question words, the questions at the top of the screen there, where, when, why, who, uh, how questions, they're questions to ask for information. Uh, pardon and sorry are when we perhaps don't understand something or we haven't heard somebody uh, clearly. Um, and they're very important words to listen for on a listening uh, test or a listening exercise because they indicate <clears throat> that the other speaker is probably going to either repeat something or they're going to clarify, perhaps paraphrase something they've just said. And that's usually the answer that the students need to listen carefully to um, when they're listening. And the question really, really, is uh, something that you find quite surprising, you didn't expect, uh, or maybe you don't even understand, you know, why somebody has said that or done that. Let's look now at the exclamations. So into the chat, uh, if I say, or you hear somebody say, hi, see you, bye, what am, what am I doing? What's happening? Okay, so if you can type into the chat. Yes, I'm greeting you, aren't I? Um, I'm either saying hello because we've just met or I've just seen you, uh, or we are parting um, and we're going our separate ways. So we're saying goodbye. So we're greeting. What about uh, the words at the top left there? Right, of course, no problem. Sure, good idea. Yeah, what am I doing if I say those words? Yep, yeah. so I'm agreeing, okay? So all of those uh, way, are ways of saying yes, okay? And they are very important, again, for understanding a speaker. And they are tested in part two of the A1 movers and A2 flyers reading and writing tests. So very often students won't read the word yes, but they, they will read uh, possibly one of these expressions. So important expressions to know for that and to use in real life. Uh, fine, great, also can be saying yes. And if I say to you, fantastic, brilliant, excellent, what am I saying or what am I communicating to you? Could be praise, yes, okay, if we're in the classroom and we're saying that to our students, uh, Julia, it could, Julia, could well be that we're praising. Support, encouraging, yes, all these lovely words and great things to happen in our classroom. Okay, uh, into the chat box, could you type your favorite exclamation to say to your students? to encourage them, uh, to praise them in class. What do you, which word do you use a lot? Good job, perfect. Brilliant and well done. Excellent, great. Give me five, lovely. Keep up the good work, yes. Excellent, okay. Good boy, girl, brilliant, excellent. Okay, so we've got lots of different ways of encouraging and praising our students. So I'm going to show you a chant about food. So Jane, can you come back on please? Thank you, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, uh, Jane and everybody who's online now, uh, look at the chant and choose which foods you like in the chant. So which, which foods do you like, Jane? Chips and chocolate ice cream. Right. So I'm going to say the chant. And Jane, when you, when I'm going to say uh, your chips and chocolate ice cream, 
I'd like you to say those words with me. Okay. Apple pie, apple pie, burger and chips, chips. burger and chips. chips, cheese sandwich, cheese sandwich, chocolate, chocolate ice, ice cream, cream. Chocolate, chocolate ice, ice cream. cream, orange juice, orange juice. Okay, Jane, what's your favourite exclamation? What do you like to say to your students? Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, so this time you're going to say brilliant after your favourite food words. Okay. Okay. And everybody online, you can also say your favourite food, wor food words and say your favourite exclamation. So are you ready? Yep. Apple pie. Apple pie. Burger and chips. chips. Burger and Chips. Chips. Brilliant. Cheese sandwich. Cheese sandwich. Chocolate, Chocolate ice, ice cream. cream. Chocolate, Chocolate ice, ice cream. cream. Brilliant. <laughs> Orange juice. Orange juice. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I could, could you hear the people in Indonesia, Jane? Yes. And, and in Mexico. I, yeah, and I heard somebody in Romania as well uh, saying their favorite food and their exclamation. And lots of people in Turkey were saying it too. <laughs> okay, so fantastic, Jane, over to you. Cool. I think you need, can you stop sharing, And Yep. Thank you. I don't know <laughs> what happened there. There. there it is. <laughs> okay, so moving on, um, we had exclamations and questions. And now our second idea is write it. So written responses are a great way, obviously, to gauge how our learners are developing. And they're also good to summarize spoken activities. We're going to look at two ways to generate language that students need to write texts. And hopefully we'll also have to give, I hope I'll be able to give you some ideas to promote deeper thinking about the world and um, both real and imaginary um, things that surround us. So we're going to look at two images and think about ideas, how we can generate ideas to help our students prepare for written texts. Let's look at the first picture. Okay, take a minute just to look at the picture. And then when you have a moment, write what you can see. Okay, only the things that you can see. Children balls, two boys, nature, nice, two balls, balls, trees, muddy clothes, leaves, great, thank you. Now I want you to think, what do the things you see make you think of? Autumn. Autumn, yep. Nature, fun. Childhood, lovely. Free time, cold weather. Yes, they're in woolly jumpers. Thank you. And looking at the image, what does it make you wonder? What does it make you wonder? What kind of questions spring to mind when you look at the picture? country is it where are they where are the parents there's a worried mother where's their mother <laughs> friends or siblings do they know each other yeah where is it 
Okay. For this activity, I've chosen a black and white photograph. Um, this was an idea that I picked up from one of John Hughes's webinars for the Bridge Council. And he was actually quoting Fiona Mocklin, <clears throat> who has a great uh, website called ELT Picks, um, which is basically English lang language teaching pictures. Um, and it's a great website if you need to if, you, if you're looking for images that you can use and Stuart's just shared the link in the chat. Um, Fiona um, explained that color photos take up 80% of our cognitive processing and so and black and white photographs take that away and encourage us to think more deeply. We'll be able to keep, compare it with another photo. So C very similar ideas. Obviously, we're giving our learners the words to describe the picture. Think, reflecting on, on how, what does the photograph remind you of, the feelings that you have when you look at the picture, and wonder. I think our questions were very similar. I'm a mother too, so I was wondering where are their parents? <laughs> Um, these are some other questions that are generated. Doing this, we are preparing our students for a writing activity or even a speaking presentation, if you like. Um, the wonder questions encourage us to really think deeply about what's happening. And from that, we could ask our students to go on and write about the photo they could continue the boy's day. They could maybe do a dialogue if you like, um, or they could write about memories of a similar day. And this is a thinking routine that is part of the visible thinking project um, at Project Zero, which is part of the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And I think Stuart's going to share a link now um, this is a, a really great resource if you are looking for um, developing thinking routines with your students. Okay, another picture. You wake up, you walk into the kitchen and hello. How did I get here? How did the octopus get here in our kitchens? Why is it wearing a hat? Is it speaking your language? Do you understand what it's saying? And where did the plants from? In the chat, can you answer the first question? How did I get here? How did the octopus get here? From the, from the sewage, from the from the sewage, from the supermarket, through the plug hole. <laughs> I see the fish market. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, through the window, <laughs> through the amazing door from the sea. This morning we had through the cat door. That's quite an interesting one. Good. Okay, so preparing, getting students to talk about the photograph will help us to generate language that they can then use for a writing activity. These are words that were established with students that they needed. Um, we've got here, we've got some nouns. Here we've got some adjectives and here we've got some verbs. Looking at the words, are there any that you think you would need to pre-teach your student? Welcome, Taufik. Tentacles, tentacles, 
tentacles. <laughs> yes. Yes, Anne and I had an, an intense conversation. Splash. Yep, slimy. Are tentacles arms or legs? Slimy. Seaweed. Yep, splash. Good. Okay, so obviously then you would take time to feed this vocabulary in and then ask your students to write, thinking about the questions I initially asked you. So how did the octopus get here? Why is it wearing a hat? Is it speaking your language? And where did the plants come from? Okay. I'm going to show you some of my students' work. Let me know what you think. And looking at, looking at the stories, could you add some of Anne's exclamations? Over to you, Anne. Okay. No, I think you're going to have to stop sharing yours, Jane, for some reason it's working differently this afternoon. <laughs> okay, try it again. Okay. Okay, so um, have you uh, got a piece of paper where you are? something to write on, not into the chat box. So does everybody have a piece of paper? Can you just type yes into the chat box, please, if you have a piece of paper, hopefully, something to write on. Excellent. Okay, so why do you need a piece of paper? Okay, so let's imagine this situation. You want to talk about food with a group of A1 mover students. So you're going to think of questions to ask students, young learners at this level, and uh, they're going to be about food. Okay. So I'm going to give you a minute. Okay, I've got my clock here and I've got a second hand. So I'm going to give you a minute to write as many questions as you can to ask an A1 mover or a group of A1 movers about food. Okay, so your time starts now. Okay, so not into the type the chat box, please, but on your piece of paper. Okay, not into the chat box onto your piece of paper, please. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so how many questions did you write on your piece of paper? Type your number of questions on into the chat box. How many did you write? So Julia had seven, Coco had four, Angelica had four. Oh, wow, Rotoa, you had 10. Okay. Right. Um, so some of you had more, some of you had fewer, some of you will be quicker writers, or perhaps your connection speed is quicker. And you heard my instructions earlier. Not a problem. Okay. So um, did anybody have questions with the what question word? Yes. Okay, so choose a what question that you wrote and type 
one of your what questions into the chat box. What is your favorite food? What can you cook? What's your favorite meal? What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, love that one. What fruit do you like? What do you like eating? What color is your favorite food? Like, love that one. What do you eat for your breakfast? Lots of breakfasts coming in now. Ice cream again. What did you have for dinner? Okay, again, it might depend what time you're on at the moment in your part of the world. What do you like to eat for lunch? Okay, so you can see a lot of your questions are similar. Some of them are exactly the same, but we have lots of different questions and that's great, okay, because we can ask lots of different questions. Okay, this time I'm not going to ask you to type into the chat box. Jane, did you have a, a who question? About food? Yes, I did, Anne. Yes, okay. So what I want you to do is first, can you whisper your who question? Then can you say it? And then can you shout it? Okay, and everybody around the world, can you whisper your who question? Can you say it? And can you shout it? And let's see if I can hear you from where I am. Ready? Jane? Who cooks your dinner? Who cooks your dinner? Who cooks your dinner? <laughs> My husband sometimes. <laughs> if I'm <Okay>. lucky. <laughs> right, so uh, I gave you a minute to talk about, to think about questions. Um, I only gave you a minute because we don't have a lot of time in this webinar. Normally I'd probably give you two or three minutes because the more questions you write, the more iman imaginative, uh, inspiring normally your questions become. So wait time, both in thinking of ideas and then us as teachers asking students to share their ideas that's a very important thing to think about and to plan into your lessons uh, because it'll give everybody a time to think, to answer, to think of their answer. And, uh, obviously, and hopefully we'll get even more imaginative answers too. And the second thing I did when I asked you to whisper, say and shout, I gave you a chance to rehearse, to practice. And again, for our perhaps our less confident learners, that is very important um, so that when they have to say it perhaps in front of people, then they've had a chance to practice the pronunciation and, and the, getting all the words together there. Uh, you could also get students to say their answers at the same time and then nobody is in the spotlight. Nobody is there, uh, the shyer students can say it too. So planning these things into your lessons and deciding I'm going to give them you know, one minute, two minutes, how long am I going to give them? I'm going to give them a chance to rehearse. That's a really important thing to do. Okay, any of your who or what questions on the slide? We did have who cooks your dinner? Yeah, that was one of the things Natalia uh, had put in who cooks in your family? Yeah, so that's pretty similar to who cooks the meals in your house. Okay, and WH questions are quite open questions, okay? Uh, but sometimes our students might not have any ideas to answer the questions, or perhaps they're worried and they can't think of the words in English to answer the questions. So uh, one thing that we have as young learner examiners in the, ex in the young learners test we have backup questions to help and support students. So who buys your food? If you see a student is having problems think, uh, understanding the question or thinking of their answer, you can say your mum or your dad. Okay, and these um, support students, but they also close down the questions a little. So again, we think about when to use these. So if I show you that question that I've highlighted there, what fruit don't you like? 
what could be my closing question or my support question for students? What fruit don't you like? So what could I say, well, how could I continue that and support uh, the students? Any ideas? Chat, chat, type them into the chat box. So apples, lemon or mango, banana or coconut. Okay, yes, we could actually, yeah, that's a good idea. So if we, if we, uh, using flashcards rather than even saying the, the words, okay. Yeah, do you like, and we could give them some examples there, Julia. Okay, I think why would, would follow on from when the students have answered our questions. So if they say, what fruit don't you like? And um, I, sorry, if I ask what fruit don't you like and you say apples, then I might say, why don't you like apples? But first we need the answer to this first question. Okay, so that's a closing down question. Okay. Right, we're going to do another activity with questions. You're going to choose a food. Okay, so choose a food. Don't type the food into the chat box. Just think of your food. I've got seven questions that I'm going to ask you about your food. So there are seven questions. So you're going to type seven one word answers into the chat box. Very important, don't write the word for your food. So if I choose apples, I wouldn't type into the chat box apples. I would type the words to answer the question about apples in the chat box. And a second important thing. So seven questions. So we write seven one word answers and we don't press enter or send until I tell you I finished, I've asked you my seven questions. Okay, so choose your favorite food, choose our food, doesn't necessarily have to be your, food, your favorite. Type one word answers into my, for my seven questions. And when we finish the questions, you press send. You ready? Let's go. So, one word answers to my questions. Don't type the food that you're answering about into the chat box or press send. Do you eat this food for breakfast, lunch or dinner? So type breakfast, lunch or dinner. Do not press send. So do you eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner? Don't press send. Do you eat your food hot or cold? So question two, hot or cold? But don't tell me yet if you eat it for breakfast, lunch or dinner, or if you eat it hot or cold. What do you do? How do you eat your, your food? Do you put it on a plate, in a bowl, or perhaps you eat it you hold it in your hands. So plate, bowl, hand is my third question. My fourth question, is your food heavy or light? Yeah, so if you pick it up, is it light or is it quite heavy? Question five, when you put the food in your mouth, is it soft or hard? when you're eating it. Question number six, is your food noisy or quiet when you're eating it? So does it make a noise when you're eating it? Perhaps if you have to break it down, if it's crisp, it might be noisy. So is it noisy or quiet? And the seventh question, how does it smell? Mm, does it smell good, lovely? Ugh, does it smell bad? Or does it smell very strong? Perhaps the smell is good, but it's a quite a strong 
spell, smell. So, okay, so everybody, I finished my seven questions. So you can now press send. Wow, <laughs> excellent, okay. Right, okay, so I'm going to choose Right, Maria. Maria's answers. Maria eats her food for dinner. She eats it cold. She puts it on a plate or she holds it in her hands. It's light. It's hard. And because it's hard, it's noisy. And it smells lovely. So what do you think Maria's food can be? For dinner, cold, eats it on a plate or put or from her hand. It's light, it's hard, it's quite noisy, and it smells lovely. What do you think Maria's food is? So, Lulia, you think it's ice cream. Astrid thinks it's taco. Uh, and Maura thinks it's toast. Uh, the Ming thinks it's pizza, milk and cereal, Alexandra, chips, apple. So, Maria, can you tell us, were we right? What was your food? Can you type into the chat box, please? Spinach pie, wow. <laughs> Right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have guessed spinach pie, because, perhaps because I don't eat spinach pie very often. <laughs> Is a pie noisy? <laughs> yeah, it could be if it was very crisp. Yes, and Georgina, I agree, it was difficult to guess, okay? But your students, if they're clever, might choose something that's quite difficult to guess, mightn't they? Because they maybe want to win the, the game if we're playing a game. Very challenging, I agree, okay, but that's great, yeah. This morning we had an orange, which was a lot easier uh, than your spinach pie, but great. Okay, so uh, my questions, okay, my questions worked on all the senses. So we, uh, perhaps a more sort of typical question, when you eat it, but then thinking about uh, temperature, thinking about what you do with it, thinking about how heavy, light, the, the feeling in your mouth and the smell. So lots of your students uh, will perceive the world in different ways and perhaps they'll have one sense um, of smell or taste or sight or sound, which is uh, stronger for them or more important than other senses. So this gives the students a chance to experience the world from different angles, which I think can help make it more memorable and help them learn. So Jane, you're going to code it. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Thank you. So um, quite recently, um, there has been interest in coding. Um, parents are keen for their children to code. Reflecting on the work that we do as teachers ourselves, we are actually preparing our, our students for the coding world. There are lots of activities that we do in the EFL classroom that naturally build coding skills. Thinking about how we get learners to respond, we're going to focus on a couple of coding techniques that also help our learners to produce responses. First coding skill is sequencing. So when we and when we do this from a very, very early age with our learners and sequencing is really important for learners. How would you complete this se sequence? Just quickly write your ideas in the chat. Two, and then two, one, one, two. Okay. Okay, did anyone have anything different? 
it could be three, one, one, four. Yep. Okay, good. Thinking about sequencing. Another easier one. How would we complete this sequence? <laughs> Apple, banana, good, good. So both of these activities could be written or spoken. Sequencing is a higher order thinking skill and it is important to develop it from an early age. This is an, an initial step. Um, it helps learners with reading and eventually science, coding included, later on. Another coding technique is decomposition. What do I mean by decomposition? Decomposition is, is, is also related to computational thinking. It involves breaking things down into smaller parts so that they're easier to use. And we can transfer this skill into the classroom activities that we do and generate further responses. So think about having breakfast. If we were to break down the stages of having breakfast, what do we have? Yeah, what are the stages? So for example, open the fridge. Oksana said, yes, prepare it, cook, make, serve, eat. Yep, more stages, serve, yep. So Sit down is a good thing. Yeah, mix it. Yeah, take some milk. Take a bowl. Pour the milk. Get the get the yeah. Grab the cornflakes. Get the ingredients. Yeah, if you have a cooked breakfast, there would be a whole order of cooking, wouldn't it? Yep. <laughs> Smell it. Yeah, or taste it. Great. So, in in a certain sense, breaking down these stages, uh, it, it's useful for learners. And it's also good to brainstorm the activity. What do we do with this afterwards? Okay, so we have all the stages. We could do lots of things with it. Um, we could do a, a listen and do activity. So you're hungry, take some milk, drink, mm, grab some cornflakes, eat. Yum, get a bowl and spoon, pour in the milk, breakfast. Um, it could become a chant uh, or you could have all of the stages written on slips of paper and your students could put them in order. Okay, so breaking things down and using them. Another coding, another, or using odd one out, um, a very, very common activity that we use in the classroom and students love. Um, odd one out help students to identify differences. And so for future coders, this is a, a very, very helpful skill in helping them to identify bugs in codes. I did, <laughs> younger brother. Um, this odd one out, which we use in Movers Speaking Test Part 3, um, asks the students to identify the different picture and to say why. And in terms of responses, this is actually the response that we need to work on with our students. So look at the, the four pictures, which one is the odd one out and why? Milk, it's from an animal, mango, milk. Okay, think about why is it different? Milk isn't three because it's fruit, milk because it's white. Okay, so we have, we've got lots of differences here. It could be milk because it isn't made of fruit. It could be mango because we don't drink it. Yep. It could be milk because it's blue and the others are yellow. Okay, but in the, in the Cambridge exams, the examiners are trained to accept all of these differences. And it's important that we do these kinds of activities, all of, exactly, all answers are accepted as long as they're logical. 
And we need to make sure that our learners are aware that there are differences. Have a look at this set of pictures. Which one is the bug? Tennis court, the picture, the fourth, because it's a sport. Tennis, four, it doesn't have a frame. <laughs> Family photo. Yeah. Tennis places are not on a screen. The family picture. Yeah, I mean, it could be, it could be the, f the picture is the odd one out because tablet, television and tennis all start with T. Um, it could be tennis because it's it doesn't have a frame. Very nice. Um, it's a yep. Oh, oh, there's another one. The picture because you can't watch it. You can watch your tablet. You can watch your television. You watch tele. It's important that we just accept the differences. Yep. Great responses, everyone. Really, really good. Yep. We can watch. Tennis on a TV or an iPad, yes. As long as you can justify it, you're fine. <laughs> Good. And real codes are another great way to develop our, our learners' coding and deciphering skills. We can use texts like this one. Oh, I forgot to say just before. Um, the pictures that we use in the odd, ones out, odd one out um, are all from World of Fun and they're freely downloadable. So you can grab these pictures and use them with your students um, and you can make more odd one outs for them. Um, Stuart or Becky, got this, thank you Becky, has just put the, the link in the chat for you. As I said, codes and deciphering codes is another great, great is another great activity and we can then use it to make responses. I'll get to that in a minute. This is Jones. Jones has written a secret message. What does it say? I'll help you. Here's the code. Hello, my name is Jones. I love I love flying high in the sky. When I fly, I feel like a helicopter. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Great. So once we've got a code and students know how to use it, we can encourage them to write responses in code. So you've asked me, how are you? This is my answer. I'm Yes, you could use emojis instead of numbers, definitely. Yep, good. I'm happy, but tired. Okay, what about this? What's your favorite color? Okay, and think about how you would answer Anne's question. What do you have for breakfast? Okay. Again, we could also exploit the chant. Um, hello, my name's Jones. I love flying high in the sky. When I fly, I feel like a helicopter. It's amazing. You could chant it or you could wrap it. And learners could then write their own in code. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Last one. Anne, 
Uh, yeah, you'll have to stop sharing, I think, Jane, again. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's move to it. <laughs> So Jane, have you got your blue line? I do. Are you ready to stand up? Yep. Okay. Uh, so Jane, if, uh, if you like what I show on the left-hand side of the screen, then you move to the left. And if you are more like what I show on the right of the screen, then you move right. So let's go. Jane, are you more like a balloon or a kite? Balloon. Me too. No. Hang on, no. <laughs> Jane, can you, have you got your balloon? Can you blow up a big balloon? Thank you. Excellent. And Jane, what's a good color for a balloon? Um, I've got this multicolour balloon full of confetti, but um, blue is a good colour for a balloon. Yeah, I agree. And Jane, are you more like an alien or a monster? A monster. I'm a monster too. Can you talk like a monster? I can try. And what's a good name for a monster? Bruce. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> okay, Jane, ask me. Anne, are you more like an elbow or a knee? Today, I think I am more of an elbow. Okay. Can you clap your elbows? I can. And what can you do with your elbows? I what can, can you move with your elbows? Sorry. I can move people out of the way perhaps I can push them or I can push maybe something that moves a door a sliding door with my elbow Anne are you wings or fur I think I am fur <laughs> and um <laughs> Okay, you've got me there. Um, so can you, <laughs> can you fly with your wings and pat your fur? Wow, okay. So I'll fly with my fur wings and I'll pat my fur. <laughs> Thank you. Is that okay? <laughs> okay, so Jane and I have um, prepared um, a handout for you with a uh, all questions at the three levels of uh, pre A1 starters, A1 movers, A2 flyers. Uh, students uh, move to the side of the screen or of your classroom or in your playground, if you're lucky and you can go outside. Uh, then ask them in their groups to do an action. So if they're a balloon, they blow up a big balloon or if they're a kite, they fly like a kite. And then we have a question to ask the students in their group. Okay, so that um, I think Becky or Stuart will be sharing it in the chat um, for you. So you can download that handout and use it in your class. Uh, I suggest you could use it as a warmer or you can use it, you can choose from topics to work on particular topics. Or even just a filler if you've got five minutes yeah. that you need to um, fill. And it's nice and random, so yes, student and responses good, are. Um, and it's a good brain break, which is the way uh, we were inspired by a website called Go Noodle, and this activity, this activity is called a brain break on that uh, website. So that's uh, our five ideas. Uh, we will have time for questions, um, and I think Stuart is going to talk to you uh, for a, a short while. Uh, and you've got time to type your questions into the question and answer box, if you can. There he is. Here I am. Hi. Hello, thanks very much. That was an action-packed webinar this afternoon, lots of movement. Um, 
Anne and Jane, thanks so much for the webinar um, and all of the, well, the five ideas, but many more than five ideas, I think. I hope you can see my screen now, everyone. Um, it is a chance for you to put questions into the Q&A box for Anne and Jane, and we'll come back to them in a couple of minutes. Thanks again, Anne. Thanks again, Jane. I can't see them at the moment. We can't see them at the moment, but they are here hovering in the background and they will be back in a moment. Um, some really lovely ideas there um, around getting kids engaged and responding in, 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 in the uh, classroom. Um, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes giving you some updates from Cambridge while you're thinking of questions for Anne and Jane. So let's just, oops, excuse me. Uh, the uh, characters and some of the ideas and materials you saw Anne and Jane referring to in their session today um, were from our new or newish fun skills course. It's a six level course short course aimed at younger learners who are specifically sort of preparing for the uh, Cambridge pre-A1 starters, A1 movers and A2 flyers exams. These are skills-based lessons around topics that are familiar to the, the uh, those of you who are familiar with the exams, so themes and topics uh, um, relevant to the exams. Uh, they draw out lots of creative thinking. There's lots of activities aimed at getting kids to collaborate with each other, with, with each other um, to communicate with each other. And my personal favorite, there are lots of great animations using these brilliant characters. So you have animations that can introduce a lesson if you feel like it, or they can review or finish a lesson with the kids if you feel like it. Um, lots of choices there, songs as well, stories. Um, also relevant to those of you who are preparing for those exams, um, as well as the official exams books, we also have these trainers for pre-A1 starters, A1 movers and A2 flyers that you can see now. If you're not familiar with the trainers, they consist of two practice tests. They are mini trainers, as you can see, um, but they do employ the same characters as fun skills. And one of those characters also um, activates as a animation, as a video on each exam task. So you, the parent, imagine the parent points the device at the exam task and the character comes to life and walks the student and the parent through the instructions of each exam task. Uh, so if you haven't seen those, check them out. They're really nice. You can talk to your representative from Cambridge or visit our website, uh, www.cambridge.org slash fun skills. Um, and then the final thing is to show you is just if you're not familiar with our free resources for teachers of younger learners on World of Fun, this is the address you can see at the bottom of the screen, worldoffun.cambridge.org. Uh, this is a great resource with loads of um, activities worksheets, posters, um, older webinars, uh, flashcards, cutout puppets, all kinds of things for younger learners, completely free and it categorizes everything by pre-A1, A1 or A2. So do have a look at that um, if you're not, if you, if you haven't seen it before. Okay, and finally, and this is the final episode of our Catch Up Fun series, as I said at the beginning, so if this is the first one you've attended, or if you haven't been to some of the others, but you would like to catch up on them, then that's what this is all about. You can go to the website, cambridge.org slash catchupfun, where you probably registered for this one. And you can watch all of our previous webinars. We have, we've done eight in total. So Anne and Jane themselves have been involved in one, two, three, four, five of them, I guess. Um, including this one. So you can see lots more ideas and on the screen there, for example, you can see Anne talking about ways to personalize grammar and Jane talk, talking about ways of using self-evaluation with younger learners. So do have a look at those if you haven't been a part of the series or seen them before. Okay, so I'd like to welcome back Anne and Jane after your great session this afternoon and see if we have any questions. I can see some sort of coming up now. Yep. Yeah, there's one about coding. About coding. Yeah, Jane? Um, how do we, if we need to involve a student who doesn't like numbers, I perhaps would change the code and use symbols um, 
there is a I think there's an, an application called Wingdings in Word where you have symbols rather than than actual numbers. Um, it may be that they're just not ready to use numbers. This activity is, is actually aimed, and I forgot to mention that um, it's on the World of Fun. It's a worksheet from World of Fun, and it's actually aimed at um, at flyers level learners where they have got a lot more um, they're a lot more familiar with numbers and and letters. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't push a student into doing an activity if they don't like numbers, but I think eventually they will need to learn numbers. And Yuli has just said coding using emoji is great. Yes, it is. And I think as you've shown, Jane, um, you can use pictures. Yeah. So Definitely. basically what, yeah. what we're doing is working on logic. Yeah. So if your students uh, are not into maths and not into numbers, then uh, there are other ways we can do it. Um, perhaps your students as well. Sometimes people, kids that don't like coding are perhaps very active learners. They like to be more physical. So again, you can involve, you know, movement, uh, you know, even what we were doing, are you more? Mm. That in a way was, uh, was also, you know, sort of coding as well and re responding. Um, you so you, you could do something within that, within that um, activity. Yeah, so it doesn't just have to be numbers. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's more about um, familiarizing learners with sequencing, which will obviously then help them to understand word order and sentence order. It's developing yeah. that <laughs> from an early age. Yes, I mean, noticing patterns and spelling in English is, yeah. you know, really, really important. Sometimes, you know, things don't fit into a pattern. Um, you know, a word like shampoo, you know, it's, it's <laughs> because it comes from another language originally. Yeah. Uh, so noticing, you know, that that doesn't really look like an English word at all, because, you know, maybe the MP, um, finding, you know, other words with MP in them, but, but ending in double O, not very many words in English. Okay. And again, that's sort of coding, isn't it? Spelling and working out logic. Um, okay. Stuart, we have said, haven't we, that we'll be writing a blog article on this. So the other ideas that we've um, yeah, absolutely. Not yeah, every every um, every episode in this catch up fun series comes with a blog. I think three or four of them are already up on our World of Better Learning blog site, along with the recording. Um, and we'll also be sending you all the recording, just to remind you, uh, for this one next week. If you've attended others, if you haven't received the recording yet, you will do soon. You'll also re receive your certificates. Um, these certificates will be sent to you via email soon. Um, yeah, we've got blogs for this one and yeah, going back for all of them. So yeah. <laughs> lots more ideas in the blogs and, and the, each blog is of course attached to the re webinar recording so you can catch up on that. Um, I was just looking as well for, but I couldn't find it, sorry. I thought I saw another question in the chat box, but it's sped past now and disappeared. Um, but there are some in the Q&A, although I think people are using the Q&A box to thank you both now. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got lots of thank yous, but not, not questions. So if any of you have another question, um, if we've missed a question, for example, then to please put the question yeah. into the Q&A box now um, while we've got Anne and Jane here. I was trying to remember what we what questions we had this morning because there were a couple of very relevant questions. Um, I don't know where I, I wrote, I've lost the paper, the sheet of paper where I wrote them down. <laughs> but. Well, lots of thank yous, lots of great feedback, lots of uh, thank yous for inspiring ideas, and inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you for the webinars. Very informative. It was awesome. <laughs> I like that word. We like that word. We should use that word more often in English. Yeah. British English, shouldn't we? Uh, thank you for your presentation. It's a very informative session indeed. Very helpful. It was amazing. Uh, <laughs> and of course, those links to catch up fun are also in the chat box. Right. Well, we are a little bit over time. So, and Jane, I, I think it's just left to say thank you so much for doing this one together. It's always really uh well, we did it first last year, didn't we? Uh, mm -hmm. And we tried, tried this out, this format out of the both of you presented together. It worked really well. We got some great feedback and it looks like you've done it again. We've got great feedback again. We've done it twice today. This is the second time today. So <laughs> thank you very much, both of you, for giving up your time.
Thank My you. My pleasure. It's great to work with Jane and great Lovely to work, with, to work with you, Anne, and you, Stuart. <laughs> and thanks, right. Becky, for all your help. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Becky, Becky in the background. Thank you very much for your help in the chat box the questions. And thank all of you for coming today and giving up your time. And I hope and I'm sure you've got lots of great takeaway ideas that you can use immediately in your classroom if you're teaching today or tomorrow or next week. I'm sure you've got some really fantastic ideas to use with your younger learners. So that's it. Goodbye all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care.